Abstract classes. So here we have a diagram. We have a superclass called animal, and there are three classes inheriting from it: clownfish, lion, and parrot are children of animal. And then we have objects at the bottom. So these are instances of each classes. Nemo is an instance of clownfish. So we use this notation, broken line, blockhead arrow, to describe an is a relationship. Nemo is a clownfish. Simba is a lion. Rio is a parrot. So let's say we have another object, but this object is an instance of the superclass animal. And let's give it a name, Harry. Harry is an animal. So in this scenario, this does not make sense. Okay. We're expecting objects to be either a clownfish, a lion, or a parrot, not just an animal. It because animal is very general. So it doesn't make sense for our scenario right now. So what we want to do is to prohibit anyone from instantiating the animal class. To do that, we make the animal class abstract. So in the class diagram, we notate that a class is an abstract class by enclosing the class name inside your chevrons. So now, we are not going to be able to instantiate the animal class. So Harry can either become an instance of clownfish, lion, or parrot. And let's say Harry is a clownfish. Okay, so now we have two objects created based on the clownfish class. Abstract classes are classes that can be extended to or inherit from, but not instantiated. So these are classes that can have children or subclasses, but they cannot have objects. Let's create a new project. I'm going to call it abstract classes. Main class will be main. I'm just going to delete the comments. So we're not going to be creating separate class files. We can just define all the classes inside the same file as the main class. So let's start with the superclass animal. Then we have clownfish, we have lion, and parrot. Let's start adding the attributes and methods. So animal will have public string name and a make sound method. Public void make sound. Clownfish will have the swim method. Lion will have the public void run. Parrot. The parrot will have the fly method. I'm just gonna copy paste this and change the method to fly. The next thing to do is to establish the child to parent relationships. So clownfish, lion, and parrot will be extending animal. Clownfish extends animal. I'm just gonna copy this and paste this on the other classes. Okay, and now we are ready to create the objects. Inside the main method of the main class, let's instantiate them all. So let's start with Nemo. So Nemo will be an instance of Clownfish. Clownfish Nemo equals new Clownfish. Next is Simba Ion. Simba equals new Ion. And we have Rio, a parrot. Parrot, Rio equals new parrot. Let's try to make Harry an instance of the animal class. So animal Harry equals new animal. So this is gonna be accepted Again, this doesn't make sense in our scenario. We want Harry to be either a clownfish, lion, or a parrot, and not just an animal. We're gonna make the animal class an abstract class. So before the keyword class, we add the keyword abstract. So now animal is an abstract class. So you see here, we are getting an error now. It's saying animal is abstract and cannot be instantiated. So now, Harry can only be an instance of either clownfish, lion, or parrot. 
So let's make Harry a clownfish. I'm just gonna copy and paste the class name. So this is how we implement abstract classes 